Hey, I'm Daryl Etherton with TechCrunch, and I'm here with my fellow writers Sarah Burr and Kyle Russell, and we're going to go over uh, Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference and the things that they announced yesterday at the keynote, um, and the things that they're talking about all week uh, this week at the Moscone Center, Moscone Center? Moscone. Moscone Center. Yep. Uh, uh, here in San Francisco. I only ever see it written. I never hear, hear it said, because I'm not from here. I'm a foreigner, <laughs> right? So, uh, you guys are local, though, right? Uh, did you have any specific strong thoughts about this, just to start us off? Okay, well, I was surprised. I mean, a lot of people were expecting uh, integration between you know, iPhones and Macs to get you know, uh, better over time, especially because Apple's been talking about how we don't make devices that try to do one thing in one device. It's each device is for its own task, but we want to make jumping between experiences better. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they really did a great job with that. I mean, the idea of like picking up something on your iPhone, saying, oh, wait, no, I'm going to finish this on my Mac, and just immediately being able to do that, I think that they showed that off. It was really impressive what they showed yesterday, and yeah. better yeah. than what I was expecting, actually. That was amazing. And they showed it off really well with Dr. Dre. I had him. I, I thought it was kind of dorky, though. They were like, I thought that segment was <laughs> cheesy and forced, but OK. No. Yeah. I thought it was kind of dorky. They were like, and our newest employee. <laughs> that was, that was, I think that was a late addition to the script. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it still, I mean, it went all right, and and it did show. You know, I mean, that's great. The the ability to pick up the calls like on your computer when you're working at your computer, uh, and to do text messages with the green text. They made a lot of fun of that too, uh, yeah. and people on Android. But that has been like a huge source of annoyance for me, and and it's. Uh, but it has forced me to like get friends and loved ones to buy iOS devices just so that I would have the blue message, not the green message, right? Because uh, it's annoying to me. I don't think that was the exact motivator for me, <laughs> but I actually made my mom, I bought my mom an iPhone just so that I would never have to deal with, like, oh, did my messages actually reach her? Right, yeah, um, exactly. So I think that's, uh, it's interesting to see them do that because that was a clear uh, ecosystem advantage, right? Right. Um, but it, it, it still is an ecosystem advantage because if you're on iPhone now, uh, you're, you're better served, right? Mm. I liked uh, Walt Mossberg's take where this is all about lock-in, mm. you know, making it so that having your iPhone and your Mac is a great experience. You don't want to have any part of your tech life outside of that ecosystem because things just won't be as smooth as they could be. Right. Yeah. And but and they did do it like uh, they didn't change the desktop operating system to such an extent that it's it's not as steep of a change as say even Windows 8, Windows 7, right? Like. They they just took the elements that are most the best adapted to being on both platforms and like integrated it that way, and you can tell they've been thinking about it for years and years and years. Right. It's not something where they were just like, this works good on these new mobile computers. Let's do that for all computers, which is what I feel like Microsoft kind of did and then tried to pull back from. What do you guys think of all the new kits introduced? Kits, all kinds of kits. Yes, Home kit, help kit, so uh, many kits. Cloud kit. <laughs> Um, I'm not sure how I feel about, for instance, HealthKit. Yeah. We just don't know how it's going to be implemented. We don't really know what it's going to look like yet. Yeah. And I'm interested to see what it'll be, but right now it's I don't even have a conceptualization of it. Right. So this is just in case watchers didn't see, this is the new um, uh, health integration built into iOS uh, for developers specifically. So there's HealthKit, which is for developers, and that lets people like Nike uh, plug into your data that you choose to share, and mm -hmm. you get to choose. There's a list, and you go through and you tick off what you don't want to share and what you do. Um, and then they can use that to inform their software so that they can tell you, like, okay, your exercise plan for today is changed because you didn't actually get that much sleep last night. So mm -hmm. you're lazy, and, and you should be, uh, you know, not necessarily strenuously working out. Um, but it does a whole bunch beyond, and it can also be used to inform your doctor mm -hmm. about, like, a specific treatment plan. But uh, but yeah, the health the health app itself is kind of a repository of all that stuff. Um, but it's it, it is it's not what what a lot of people were expecting, I think, yeah. based on the rumors, right? Mm -hmm. um, because nine to five Max, Mark Gurman, who is a secret wizard of <laughs> finding out Apple information before it it comes out uh, in the public, was saying that this was gonna be more like passbook. And, and very comprehensive, and then integrate with a lot of Apple's own devices, too, which it may still mm -hmm. at some point, mm -hmm. right? Um, they haven't announced anything on that front. But, but yeah, it did seem, it seemed a little bit sort of thrown in there in a series of things. It didn't seem like a focal point that Apple necessarily wanted to call attention to yet. With that said, I think that Apple gave a clear idea of 
you know, we're, the Mac is no longer going to be the center of your digital life. It's going to be your phone. Your phone is going to be the thing that's actually connected to all your health devices, yeah. everything in your home, yeah. everything in your car. Yeah. You know, and that's an interesting shift in strategy because mm -hmm. you know, already the iPhone is more important for their business, right. but to actually be, you know, your iPhone is your main device. It's interesting just how they, sh how they think about everything is going to be shifted a little bit because of that. Yeah, and the, and the continuity features that we were talking about earlier, those now make Macs a peripheral sort of right. to your iOS device as mm -hmm. well, right? Um, and yeah, they didn't talk about any of those kits necessarily, CloudKit to some extent, but the rest of them aren't going to be resident on your Mac, at least not in these iterations. There's not right. going to be a HealthKit Mac equivalent um, or a past. Is it pass kit? What did they call it? Touch ID? I don't think uh, they called that a oh, kit. Oh, yeah, there was the ID or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, it wasn't, wasn't a, a kit. kit. It wasn't no. a kit. But it, but it's, I think it's, it's just the touch, a, uh, touch ID API. Touch ID API. Yeah. Uh, what did you think about that, by the way, the Touch ID API? So being able to use that same Touch ID, touch ID technology that uses your thumbprint to unlock the phone to authorize apps to do basically anything, so potentially mobile payments, um, potentially you know unlocking your history of your personal finance with Mint, which is what they demoed. Um, anything like that, now you can use Touch ID to, to authorize that. Good, bad? Uh, I mean, I don't, I guess I don't really know until I actually use it personally myself on, I mean, how much I'm actually yeah. going to be excited about that. I, Do you have a 5S right now and you use Touch ID? I, uh, I just have a 5, yeah, I have okay. a 5. So, and I don't use Touch ID, right. so it's not, it's not useful for me right now. But yeah. I could see, I mean, if it's, you know, gives me the ability to, you know, lock everything, then I don't have to be, I mean, I don't actually don't even, I mean, I probably shouldn't say this, but I actually don't have a passcode on my phone either. <laughs> no, so. that's, I think that's <laughs> true of a lot of us. I didn't have one no, until I, uh, I got the Touch ID. I think the numbers speak for themselves when they show how, yeah. you know, before Touch ID and after, how many people use passcodes, how many people lock their devices. Yeah. Before it was like 50-50 almost. Yeah. And then after it was like, it was ridiculous. Yeah. It was like 80-20 or yeah, 90 Yeah, I think 83%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, in the next couple of years, when Touch ID is on every device Apple makes, or every mobile device at least, we'll see, I don't think that'll ever be a thing on Mac, just because... No, why not? Mm, maybe um, they'll throw it in beneath the touchpad or something. Right? Okay. They, um, they probably won't. But at the same time, yeah, no, I think that why would you not use it? Why would you not make that part of your everyday life when on a 5S today, you just touch your thumb and it's, you know, faster than typing could be? Yeah. yeah. Um, and so you feel like, because they, they did... I mean, the, the reason initially that they talked about not using that with outside developers was for privacy, right? Right. right? But they made sure to address that this time, too, saying, you know, the fingerprint information isn't actually available to developers. It's right. basically just a shortcut to um, the stored information or the stored login or whatever, but it hasn't, they, don't, they never at any time see that. It stays on device still. So do you think they address that fine? Do you think people are going to cry foul privacy-wise or no? I, I don't know. I, I actually kind of think maybe there's even further applications than we don't even see right now. I mean, they were talking about HomeKit and being, a, you know, having the ability to turn on lights and mm -hmm. all sorts of, I mean, imagine being able to, you know, the touch of the thumb, unlock your door. I mean, that's, for me, that might be, you know, for a lot of people that might be useful. You don't have to carry a bunch of other stuff around. There's a lot of really cool possible applications. Yeah, okay. So, so I don't know if that's actually going to be what happens, but yeah, yeah, no, yeah. that could that could do. There, there's different ways that people are approaching exactly that, right? Mm -hmm. Like a way to authenticate or identify a user so that when they walk into any setting, mm -hmm. everything is automatically personalized for them. Mm -hmm. And Touch ID could easily be a way to do that. Mm -hmm. um, some of the other ones people are talking about are biometrics, right? Mm -hmm. like, right. There's a band that does the heart sensing. Uh, it's called the NIMI, mm -hmm. it's out of Toronto. Mm -hmm. Local guys. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> but that's also like pretty far-fetched, right? It's like, do you want to wear something that detects your heartbeat and then uses that as your identification? I don't know. The thumbprint might actually be easier, especially since Apple has created such wide adoption for it already. Right. Mm -hmm. So we've spent a lot of time focusing on you know, these API kits that are going to be available. What do you think about the new version of Mac, Yosemite. I'm personally a fan of how the things that they brought over from iOS. I think a lot of people have been overly concerned that Apple is going to simplify it too much. Yeah. But things like Spotlight, I think that they brought over a lot of nice features from the iOS well, that's version like, of that. But that's it's Alfred and you know. Yeah, no, exactly. The version that they showed yesterday, that looks better than it is on iOS. The notification tab on the right side of Mac, I think it looks nicer than the, the today tab on iOS seven does. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It makes more sense. It's funny that they kept, uh, what's it called, dashboard, and then also that. Because yeah. it seems to replicate a lot of the functionality of dashboard without being 
this weird thing that you don't really understand they and that no one I know uses mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't even come up with a new name for the interface elements. It's still just widgets. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that, uh, that seems like a pretty clear sign. I don't think we'll see it next time around. So 10.11, or they might go to something else, but 10.11 <laughs> will be no, no dashboard. That's my prediction right now. Next hmm. year, this time. All right, we'll remember this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what do you think of the look of Yosemite? Uh, uh, do you I think like you went it. too close, too far from iOS 7, that uh, design aesthetic? I like it. I like the, the icons are very nice looking. It's pretty. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, the dark mode, I'm very excited about. Oh, everyone went nuts about the dark mode. <laughs> yeah. It was like the dark side, and everyone just went completely nuts. Game changer. <laughs> I was really excited about it. I think I turned to Pan's Rune. You were one of those that were like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's good. Like the I'm, the messages is much better. Messages always seem sort of like an afterthought on the Mac, and now it seems at home. I feel like they had more time to play with the look of it. I think last year, I mean, just look at the reactions we saw last year's design. You know, people were freaking out over icons and typography. Whereas this year, I didn't see any complaints about that. I no, feel. people yeah. seem to be yeah content with the look. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I think that does it for our thoughts uh, right now. But uh, thanks for joining us uh, for WWDC um, wrap up 2014.